Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Wikidata and Education panel. Um, we're just happy anyone is here because there are four amazing sessions happening all at the same time, so thank you for showing up. We're happy you're here. Yes, we are also happy, and we... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, really, all the sessions are really good. So this is for the people at home. If you are watching uh, something else, please come watch us later, or vice versa, uh, because there's a lot of awesomeness in this conference. So uh, good morning again. And just to be uh, clear on what to expect from this session, uh, we're going to have a really quick introduction of these amazing people that are assembled here today. Um, we're going to do an introduction of around three minutes each, and then we're simply going to have a chat. Uh, we're going to discuss education and Wikidata and what could be done together, and hopefully we can then open the floor to, to questions, but do feel free to basically interrupt us if you have something burning and you really want to know the answer to. Um, so without further ado, um, let's meet our panelists. And the first is Joao. So, hi everyone. Is it, is it working? Yeah. Okay, so my name is Joao Peshansky, username Joaopi. I'm a member of the user group Wikimovimento Brasil and the user group Wikipedia and Education. And I'm a university professor, particularly in the Department of Social Communications, where I teach computational journalism and media studies. And I have two slides, I'm not sure if I need... Tell so, me when to, to switch. Okay, yeah, you can switch. Mm -hmm. So I will just mention two projects that, to some extent, give a background of what, I'm, what my understanding of the connection of Wikidata and education are. So the first project is the idea of using Wikidata as an instrument for Wikipedia, both, uh, mostly to create more meaningfulness and efficiency in the process of working with my students. So this was a project done twice, in which my students created true structured narratives based on Wikidata entries for Wikipedia in Portuguese on elections. There were around 400 entries created, and the idea is to have my students not feel the, uh, the, the, the idea that editing Wikipedia, particularly tables, is boring. So we provide a gigantic structured draft based on Wikidata, so it provides more efficiency and effectiveness for the students. If you could go to the second one. And we can talk later if you're interested, and provide a lot of links. And so the second case is one that I'm running right now. So in Brazil, there were four distinct investigations of human rights crimes committed during the military dictatorship, two by the government, one by intellectuals, one by family members of killed and disappeared people in Brazil. And as they were completely autonomous uh, endeavors, data that they collected was conflicting. So we are using Wikidata as a way of dealing the, with conflict information, disagreeing data, and knowledge diversity and having my students work as curators of the information in which we don't impose one over the other, but we try to understand the context, the methodology of the information that was created. And this, uh, there is, of course, actual results, and there is a dashboard you can check, but I would just point on this one, a, a recent Wikidata Lab training that we had with Danny Vrandechik on disagreeing data and knowledge diversity that has actually informed the way we are working, the methodology around this particular project. This particular project. And I think. Thank you so much. Next is Yuan. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so hi, uh, my name's Yuan. I work as the Wikimedian in residence at the University of Edinburgh. It's a partnership between Wikimedia UK and the University of Edinburgh, looking at ways in which we can benefit from and contribute to the Wikimedia projects. We're working with about 10 different course programs at the moment, and we're on the verge of publishing our first booklet of case studies of how Wikimedia is uh, being used in education in the UK. Uh, in particular, we've been working with uh, Data Science for Design master's students uh, for about three years now, 
and uh, the course leaders on that course approached m uh, myself after uh, me and Navino Evans, who's behind Histopedia, ran a workshop at Repository Fringe Conference uh, on, focused on Wikidata, and they were really interested in teaching data science through working with real-world data sets. And so what they do is they host a data fair every year in October where people from around Edinburgh, around Scotland, different institutions come and pitch a data set to the students on the master's program there to work with intensively over a seven week uh, period. And it's a three minute sort of speed dating exercise where a data set is pitched and the students organize themselves into groups of three and they then uh, analyze the data set work with it and they want to tell engaging visual uh, visualizations with the, those data sets. So of the 15 data sets that were pitched by places like the National Library of Scotland, National Records of Scotland, I pitched this data set, which is the Survey of Scottish Witchcraft database, which is one of the University of Edinburgh's own, and it was in a Microsoft Access database. Um, and it basically has all the records of witch trials in Scotland from 1563 to 1736 stored in a static access database. And we just pitched to the students what could they do if they turned that into linked open data. And we did that over two years and that leveraged some money to um, hire a woman in STEM student to become an intern for three months. And she had a background in GIS. Uh, so we asked her to look at all the place names mentioned in the data set so that she could then plot all of these witch trials, all of these accused witches on a map, which now exists on this website, which was live as of a month, about a month ago. And we're now pitching to the students a, a, a further project of now that the information's on Wikidata, can we do some network analysis of seeing who the main influencers were? Um, and link it up that much better and have a really rich understanding of this period of history. Okay, that's me. And next, thank you so much, Yuan. Next is Deborah. Hi, thank you. Thank you guys all for being here. Um, I have been a Wikipedia author for forever and uh, I'm a professor for computer science here in Berlin at a local engineering college. Um, I've been teaching a course called Semantic Modeling since about 10 years. And in the past three recent years, I've started using Wikidata as one of the examples for uh, what we're actually doing. Do you want to go on to the next one, please, Shani? Thank sure. you. Um, <clears throat> what we're doing is this project called uh, University Degrees. Now, the students start off with a background that they've learned all the traditional stuff about RDF and OWL and using Protégé, and it hurts, and it's stupid, and I hate this. And so after we've been through the fire of that, then we graduate to Wikidata. And we decided to model this microscopic part of the universe called university degrees, because we're a university and we know all about university degrees. And because there is a database available in Germany called Anabin that has all of the data theoretically in it on degrees that are granted. I use it as a member of the admissions committee uh, for our master's program to see if a bachelor's degree program is accredited or not. And so the idea was, well, we'll just dump Anabin into Wikidata. Then we learned that reality is much, much worse than this actually is. So that what they end up doing is choosing a country, they research the university structure there, usually just pick one or two universities, um, and then try to model the degrees that are granted. We got a property accepted called grants, that a university grants this degree, and the idea is we can see what degrees are granted by a university, and when we go to a person that we can model which degree they actually have. Now we've ended up with a lot of problems, and I have some modeling problems I can't model in Wikidata. If anybody has some great ideas, I'd love to talk to you about it, because we have the issue of double degrees and double majors, and there's all sorts of monsters running around Wikidata called things like Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery. And I just can't imagine putting together all the possible combinations of double degrees into Wikidata. That would just um, kill me. Uh, 
There are also degrees that have more than one participating university. We found one that has five participating universities for the first year and three different ones for the second year. And then there's the question of honors degrees, which is different in all different countries. And so it turns out to have lots of wonderful modeling issues that I have no idea how we're going to go on with this. And the next slide, the last one, just to give you an idea, we collect stuff. So in our wiki project, we have a table, and you're welcome to, if you find something weird, to uh, put it in there. We have all these bachelor's degrees that we found floating around Wikidata, master's degrees, there's this wonderful one over here under other, a master's degree in Icelandic medieval studies. Um, I, 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 th I think the five people who've graduated from that are probably all on Wikidata, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, my interest is from more of a computer science point of view, what is an ontology, what is classification systems, how do we go about doing this? And we thought university degrees would be easy, and they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Deborah. And next is Akbar Ali. Thank you, Shani. My name is Akbar Ali from Dubai, United Arab Emirates. I'm working as a social science teacher in United Arab, Arab Emirates in school. Uh, since uh, 2015, I use Wikidata and try to introduce Wikidata in school, basic level education, especially in high school standard. As part of that, yeah, we introduced uh, Wikidata among the school, high school students, uh, especially to collect data at first, uh, especially uh, personal uh, data of the great personalities. And uh, we gave assignments to students to collect the data from the Wikidata. That was the first introduction part. Uh, then, uh, same like Wikidata, Wikidata info box, uh, the pe uh, students prepared info box uh, by modeling Wikidata. That was another thing we did. Then the next two activity was uh, we had students from different uh, countries like Pakistan, Afghanistan, and uh, Europe and countries also. And a lot of students are from different languages, so uh, we conducted the translation of uh, labels and descriptions. And from the classroom itself, by using the device, students edited uh, some descriptions and labels. At the same time, uh, we had uh, Four classroom, around 28 students were in the classroom. So, so totally, we had 112 participation from four classes, and we also conducted a teacher training program for teachers who are trying to introduce Wikidata in their subject. At the same time, we have some challenges. Many students do not have the devices that we are going to tackle by next academic year by using a lot of uh, devices. And the internet connectivity is the another issue. Some of the students, or sometimes we feel the internet lack of internet connectivity. That is especially uh, when we tried this activity in the India. Also, there is internet connectivity issues also there. And actually, uh, Wikidata or Wikipedia, since it is not the part of our curriculum, but next academic year we are trying to introduce as a um, curriculum tool uh, Wikidata. That is one, one of the future plan, and we also would like to uh, teach the students some of the basic uh, uh, Spark query. And uh, same like Armenian club, we also try to uh, form the wiki clubs in schools. That is our future plans. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and lastly, you also need to, to meet me, kind of. So, hi everyone, I'm Shani Evenstein. I'm uh, from Israel. I work at the Tel Aviv University. I'm an educator and a uh, researcher, actually my PhD is about Wikidata, specifically as a learning platform. Um, I'm, I've been uh, a, an open knowledge advocate for a long time now and um, uh, just recently became part of the board of trustees. The only reason I have to mention it is just to say that everything I say here is not in my hat as a trustee uh, or a representation of the WMF, but rather of me as uh, a volunteer and an educator and a researcher. Um, and I want to tell you a bit about my experience. So I've been uh, teaching Wikidata, um, I would say since 20, 2014 would be the first year that I started to introduce it to my courses. Um, but I would, before delving into my courses, I would say that there are two major uh, models of incorporating Wikidata into the academic curriculum or the educational curriculum. Uh, one is, is an alternative assessment. That is when um, different lecturers decide to give their students 
an assignment on Wikidata, using Wikidata. Previously, it was Wikipedia, right? Like everything we're now experiences with Wikidata um, is, is like what we had about 10 years ago with Wikipedia. Um, so we're, we're going through, in a, in a way, the same process now of introducing Wikidata as a learning platform to the educational world, in a, in a way. And just like with Wikipedia, there are two models that are maybe more, but two major ones that I could at least recognize, and I work with both. So the first is, instead of the students being tested or writing a paper, they do something on Wikipedia or Wikidata. That's the first model. And in that sense, I've been um, supporting a variety of lectures uh, around Israel in various universities around, around Israel, uh, starting in 2017. So it took some time, right? It's almost five years um, since Wikidata was formed for academia to start actually engaging with it, in Israel at least, in academic courses as an assignment or as something that we, we've actually mentioned it a bit, a bit before in courses, but um, not really having the students write anything, right? Um, and the first ones to interact were people from computer sciences, from digital humanities, uh, that sort of um, fields, because it was a natural way of giving the students um, a project that they can actually apply that is related to what they study. Um, this coming semester, I'm going to support two such um, activities, one in an international digital culture studies um, in a digital discourse course. Um, and we're going to have a, a Wikidata workshop, and that's going to be part of uh, the students' assessment. And also something that I'm actually very much excited about at the bar University Computer Science Department um, on a course on semantic web. Uh, they have, uh, and that is going to be in collaboration with the Israel Antiquities Authority. And the thing is, the lecturer that teaches this course wanted the students to have a project that actually means something. So she thought Wikidata would be a good option. So this is what we're get, we're, this is gonna be how we start, right? On the right, uh, these are the cards that we get from the Israeli Antiquities Services. Uh, these are word files, by the way, word files, okay? Um, nothing is word files, I'll say it again. Nothing is digitized. Um, and what we want to do is have the students work on these, model these. Now, because it's a semantic web course, they have been grappling with how to model things, and they've been using what Deborah has been doing, basically using Protégé and using OWL and using like very basic RDF um, um, way of thought in, in terms of doing it. And the, the trick is going to be how we can then take it and map it into Wikidata, which is a real live... Um, Flex, with a flexible ontology kind of project. So that's coming up this semester. And I would say the second model um, is one of where Wikidata assignment is the main assessment. And that is happening, as far as I know today, only with my courses at Tel Aviv University. Um, but as some of you know, I have opened elective courses at Tel Aviv University um, where um, my students basically contribute to, Wikidata, to Wikipedia. Um, the first course was in 2013. It then a second course opened in 2015 for the whole campus. So basically every undergraduate student at Tel Aviv University can take such a course. And the, why I'm mentioning it is because <laughs> last year um, I completely transformed the curriculum of that course to, to basically feature Wikidata in an academic course for the first time. And um, this is a, a course called From Web 2 to Web 3, From Wikipedia to Wikidata. And um, these are my, uh, this is the first class of, that graduated from that course. Um, and in this course, of course, Wikidata was, the assignment was the main thing, like using Wikidata and learning about Wikidata was the main thing of the course. It's not uh, just an assignment in a course that deals with something else. So these are the two different models. This is what I've been doing. And now that, um, now that you know all of us, um, I'm hoping that you can see only from the introduction how, um, in a way, diverse it is, how you can do it in very different uh, ways. There's just not just one way of doing it or dealing with it, um, but there are some things that are, I think are in common um, to all of us and some um, specific, I would say, challenges or issues that we all deal with. So I thought it would be interesting to 
kind of have a discussion with the panelists now and see how they um, have come to be in a place where they even incorporate Wikidata into the curriculum because that's not happening out of the blue, right? We have to actually work for it to happen. And there has been um, work being done for years and years. For me to open that course, for instance, I had to, it started with one session in a course, and then a year later, two sessions and three sessions, and I wasn't satisfied, and I wanted more and more and more until I was able to convince the university to actually do it. But I'm, I'm quite sure that all of these panelists have uh, their own challenges in terms of you know, persuading the academic institutions where they're at to, to actually even go for it. So I would be very happy to uh, start the discussion by asking you, uh, what, were, what did you have to do to persuade your institutions to even do it? Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, our institution was hosting me to sort of work with course leaders and they, they were very much um, mindful that the bread and butter of what I was doing should really be with in curriculum work and we, ha we had a course that was data science for design and it, I just happened to be running a workshop where one of the course leaders was attending and it percolated, struck and he was looking for people to pitch data sets and mm -hmm. Wikidata was an interesting data set for him to model. He was actually interested in me pitching the idea of Wikimedia's data on harassment um, uh, to the students. He was, he was looking, for, but I was looked into that a bit and we, 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 we thought maybe we could do something with the survey of Scottish witchcraft data and we approached the court, the people behind that database and said, could we release this as open linked open data and see what the students could do with and because they were trying to let the website survive and the data survive because it's not really been used since 2003 they were quite interested in what could new insights could be done mm -hmm. so uh I, it was pushing against an open door really in that that particular way but it, it, there was a lot of work that went behind that that years to sort of mm -hmm. persuade yeah. i would say but, but, but in any case, it sounds like you are one of the lucky ones, right? You are a uh, Wikimedian in residence at a university. Woohoo! Uh, we have to say something about that um, in itself because I think the fact that academic institutions are now starting to realize that they even need this position is something kind of new. And you are yeah. uh, a pioneer in that sense, and we have a bunch of others now joining you around the world, but it's quite amazing. Yeah, so Andy's in the audience as well, so yes. he, uh, sort of, I hope he's feeling better, actually. But uh, yeah, he's at Coventry University and mm -hmm. uh, Wikimedia in residence there, so we'd like more. Yes. Um, Martin Poulter at Oxford University was yeah. kind of uh, the inspiration for my own residency because mm -hmm. he was doing edit-a-thons at the Bodleian Library on the Great War and Ada Lovelace Day. And our director of IT, Melissa Heighton, was looking at what the work he was doing at Oxford and thinking, could, and it, be a, could it be applied in mm -hmm. teaching and learning? Did it have to be libraries only? Or did information literacy, digital skills, you know, how under-representations of knowledge, did that have applications in teaching and learning? And that's kind of, she, so she ran an edit-a-thon in Edinburgh on the Edinburgh Seven, the first female undergraduates in Britain uh, who didn't have Wikipedia pages at the time. And she invited Professor Alison Littlejohn, who's now Dean of Teaching and Learning at University of Glasgow, to come and do some research uh, to make sure it wasn't just a gimmick, that there was actual genuine t teaching and learning going on in these editing environments. And she's produced mm -hmm. about five or six research papers that says there is actual point to doing this in education. Yeah, and I think you're making a, 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 an important point about how uh, we also need academic research showing that this is valuable, right? And currently, we have zero. I mean, besides my research um, that I'm working on now and will take some time to, to publish, um, there is zero, zero research about education and Wikidata. We have tons of research about Wikidata, um, but not about how it could be used as an educational platform in that sense. You've mentioned literacies and 
We actually have a bunch of, uh, quite a lot of academic research about how to utilize Wikipedia in that sense and how it helps to, um, to enhance all sorts of literacies, right? Uh, digital skills, academic skills, critical thinking, uh, collaborative work, all of that. Um, and I think Wikidata is kind of taking it one step further and we can use it to teach people data literacy. But we have zero research to support that and, and therefore it's kind of, um, it, it, we are just at a, a beginning stage in that sense. Yeah. And so, yeah, and so what you're saying just supports that. Yeah, so we're sort of a research based institutions so we mm -hmm. have to sort of evidence what we're doing yeah. and that there is worthwhile you know academic purpose mm -hmm. so yeah it's sort of we've we've got these research papers on wikipedia editing but yeah, yeah more more on wikidata would definitely help make the case further yeah deborah what about you well i'm lucky too because yes. i'm yes, a you are. german professor and that means all i have is a heading uh, and I and get you to can choose do whatever what you I want. want to teach. And I put the heading in the curriculum anyway, because I designed the curriculum. So um, that makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I was very lucky that I had two really great students who had been working here at the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, the German uh, Wikimedia Foundation, as uh, student programmers, uh, Lucy and Charlie. And they both did their bachelor's thesis on um, Wikidata. And, I mean, you may have heard of Lucy's, that's the article placeholder, that was her bachelor's thesis. And so it was clear that it was, if, it's, if it's easy enough for some brilliant bachelors to do, my masters had better be able to do it as well. Mm. And so that's when I started working our way into that. And uh, they, the students really enjoy doing something real and not just something that's, you know, get a grade and then it's gone. They found this was, it, it's scary too because you make a change and then some editor comes along and screams at you because you made a stupid mistake. But it's okay, it's, it's a wiki, we can turn it back and start over again. Yeah. Joao, what about you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess my use of Wikidata is dependent on my use of Wikipedia as an educator, so I started doing wiki assignments in 2014 when I was just hired as a university professor and that was challenging because my school didn't really understand. I had never done it. So I didn't really know what to expect if it was gonna work out. I actually was not a Wikimedian at the time. I just read a book at a grad student and I said, okay, that might be cool. It was my time so I worked and it was basically the, the university where I worked, they required that I did the Wikipedia assignment as well as the expected uh, evaluation of my seminar. So it was basically double grading. So, wow, that's, and I had at the time 175 students. It was really hard, but then to some extent They've seen they couldn't change me, so they, they had to adapt. And now I, the transition to Wikidata was easier, I guess, because now I'm a little bit more senior and they let me do whatever I want, just like what you were saying. I just, okay, they don't even ask anymore what I'm doing. And I think the, the whole use of Wikipedia and Wikidata now for me is just, I, well, there are problems that need to be solved in knowledge building. Sometimes you need Wikipedia, sometimes you need Wikidata, sometimes you need Wikivoyage, Wikimedia Commons. So I've just started a project, for instance, on structured data on commons. We've uploaded from a GLAM project a thousand files coming from the military dictatorship. No one knows anything about them. And we are working with my students to identify, to depict anything we can on the pictures by the expect, with the expectation that if we identify there are 17 stairs on the building in which the students were protesting the government, we can identify the building. So I think you go with a purpose. That's the whole thing of what we are doing in general. It has value, it's meaningful. And if you're able to convey that to the students and then broaden and deepen the experience of meaningfulness that they can acquire from data literacy or media uh, training or, I don't know, history, understanding, political values, democracy, whatever. 
what you are working on as a professor, then you've reached the purpose. And I think it's just, for me, it's a resource, and it's a marvelous resource. And it's, I'm glad I'm part of this community because it helps building this resource. So basically, you either have to become a Wikimedia in residence or become a university professor to be able to do whatever you want. Um, but not everyone is in that position, and I think um, Akbar Ali is representing a, another view of that, which is also important. And in a way, uh, me as well. I mean, having, having one step at the door is, is making it easier to, to implement changes once you're already in, but making that first step to convince the institution that it's even worthwhile is very difficult. It's very challenging. And so um, I want to uh, kind of move between this question and the next one and, and start talking about the ch some of the challenges that we're all facing uh, doing this work. So I think you're the perfect person to, uh, to start with that because uh, you've already mentioned a bit of the challenges, but maybe you can um, explain some more. Okay, actually there was always a question, what will be the new innovative teaching method? That was the question we arised among the teachers community in the UAE. So I thought to share about the Wikidata at first, that will be new for them. So as part of the collection of, as part of the doing assignment, uh, we have, usually the students use uh, Google or something other webs like Wikipedia, but the Wikidata was a new thing for them. So, first of all, we started uh, by collecting the information from Wikidata. We framed uh, the template in the paper, same like Wikidata template. So, it was a, a good thing for understanding the structure of uh, Wikidata for students. And uh, we started the collected information. But uh, there was a one problem that uh, when we do the uh, uh, content-wise, like when we add uh, content into Wikidata, students did not create a user account for them especially they need email ID. So actually they are high school students, so, so most of them uh, have no email ID. So what we have done that by using Google Spreadsheet, uh, the data which we created, that we moved to Google Spreadsheet, then myself, uh, I was adding this all data into Wikidata by using QQ statement. Uh, actually, that is one of the challenges. We need to create more. Uh, we need to give chance for students to create their own ID, especially if in a, uh, they are in high school level students. So they they need email. Such uh, procedures, you know, that was uh, that is uh, still uh, one challenge. Is the uh, if we are overcome, uh, if the parents are so permitting that, uh, we can create hundreds of uh, students email uh, sorry user ID, and their contribution will be there. That is one of the challenges. Second thing. Uh, I was a head of the Department of Social Science, so I could uh, inculcate uh, Wikidata as part of our curriculum adaptation plan. But at the same time, uh, if I have to run these uh, Wikidata projects in all other subjects, we need to get the support of uh, especially the school full team. So I think we need to give much training and awareness to the teachers uh, what are the uh, uses of Wikidata? How can we inculcate Wikidata as an educational tool in their curriculum? Surely, if the teachers are convinced and if they are agree that, I think uh, we can solve that problem too. Yeah. These are the two problems, from teacher's side or from student's side. Yeah, I think you, you are making a really important point about creating awareness, right? And yes. um, I think Yuan also talked about that. Um, sometimes it's as simple as someone sitting in, at the right place at the right time at a lecture that you're giving someplace and it sparks something in their mind and they kind of get it. And then um, you, you can expand from there. But without that um, legwork, the grassroots work um, that we've all been doing, it would be impossible to get to a residency position or um, to have university professors decide to incorporate it into their curriculum because it's a lot of work. It takes work. Even doing it just with Wikipedia takes work, as we all know. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's an important step in a way in creating this atmosphere or this, this ecosystem where this is a thing that we do in higher education. And we're basically, um, as we said, at the very beginning stages of disseminating the idea even uh, that this is possible, that this needs to happen, that this has to happen because, because that's the only uh, good tool that we have today to basically teach the students data literacy. So um, 
I want to hear, um, Deborah, a, a bit more about your challenges in your courses, because obviously starting is not the issue here, but you have some other challenges. Right. We have other challenges in the sense that we're interacting with the Wikidata community in a weird time fashion. It's all comp compressed into this semester, and it's the second half of the semester. So when we want things changed, we want them changed fast. Getting the property of grants put through, took, you know, it didn't come through until like a week before the semester was over. Luckily, everybody had their quick uh, statement sheets all ready to go. We just put the number in, pushed a button, and did a lot of edits. Yeah, and then we were dead for, another, for half a year because I only teach this class in the summer. So we have another one that we had proposed this, um, uh, this summer the double degree one, because there are so many double degree, uh, people who have double degrees, and we weren't sure how to model it anyway, but we proposed this, pro uh, this, uh, this property, and now it's marked as, this seems to be dead because nobody's interested in it anymore. Well, we're interested, but we're not interested until next summer again. So um, we, we don't have this continuous interaction with the community, but it comes and fits and starts. Yeah. So in a way, uh, what you're saying is, um, just stressing the importance of being in close relationship with the Wikidata community. Um, and that is true, I would say, to, to incorporating any wiki project into the curriculum. You have to have the support of the community. If the community is not behind you in a way, it could become messy. So that's a, a good takeaway, I would say, in general. Um, Joao, what about some of your challenges? Okay, so... What, with Wikidata particularly, I think one challenge that relates to what you're saying about the lack of academic research is also the lack of uh, resources that we can use for students. Yeah. So I think we've created for one of the projects that I've just shown with the help of Giovanna, Eden, Erika, who are here at the conference as well. Giovanna is here. So she was my student. So. Multiplicate. They were all my students. They were. There's a process of multiplication to some extent with what we are doing, but we needed resources and to sh so students could actually rely on to edit Wikidata and understand what they need to do and to work on structured data on Commons. This was a challenge, so we had to put time on that. We, I think that was a major challenge, and another challenge that I see, which is, again, always worrisome, is that my students assess Wikidata assignments as boring, which for me is really tough to digest. They love doing Wikipedia now, but Wikidata is just filling out a form for them. And I think that's something that we need to improve if we want to use it as an educational resource. Because they are willing to do it, they see the purpose, it's just the actual operation is boring. And I think that's something that we need to improve design for education as an open education resource. Yeah, I'm going to use what you're saying. Uh, we, need to, we need to see the magic. You need to introduce the magic of smart queries and all those kind of models into your students. Uh, that's, uh, that's why I'm feeling that. Uh, yeah, because... Uh, in, uh, because in Kerala last year we tried uh, uh, conducting a series of workshops for engineering college students uh, as a part of my uh, user group activity. Uh, nearly 12 engineering colleges. We gone to the, all the colleges and done Wikidata workshops uh, with hands-on editing. And uh, yeah, it's boring. Initially it's boring. It's filling up a form for students, but when we switch to Sparkle queries and we are uh, showing these kind of uh, linked data models and all the maps and all those stuffs, yeah, then uh, the scenario changes. It's super interesting. It's uh, suddenly become a big thing for the computer science students. Uh, and also, yeah, uh, we had a some partnership with the uh, language departments uh, in some universities. Uh, uh, we are, uh, this year I am going to talk about Lexemes, uh, Lexeme projects, so that uh, language uh, departments can 
uh, model that uh, uh, language and add a lot of data. So yeah, that's a, a you can make it interesting. A lot of ways are there in Wikidata, I think. Yeah, thank you for, for adding um, from your experience. I, I wanna uh, go back to what Joao was saying. Joao was making two important points, I think. One is about awareness that we're still lacking and um, the, the fact that we don't have enough resources yet to use it well in an educational setting. And since we're, um, maybe it's a good time to open a parenthesis and say, we are just five examples from around the world. Um, obviously, there are a lot of other people doing amazing work in, in other um, places in the world, in other academic institutions or educational settings, and we've already acknowledged some of them. I encourage you to also speak to Matthew, to um, uh, Jason Evans, who's here, um, to Will Kent, can, can you say hi? And I, I specifically want to acknowledge um, Will, uh, who's here, because Will is part of WikiEd uh, Foundation, they're the education program for um, the US and Canada. And what they've done, they've waited for some time, but when they do things, they do, it, they do they right. And they created an online training for Wikidata, which is now um, an online module that all of us can use. So uh, they are helping to create resources in that sense uh, that other people can use. I also want to acknowledge Asaf Beltov, who's sitting here, um, who has been a guest lecturer at a variety of institutions around the world helping to uh, evangelize, in a sense, for Wikidata. And without, without um, resources such as his introduction to Wikidata, it would have been uh, more difficult to, to disseminate. So this is just to stress that we, as a community, are at the very beginning stages of creating actual resources that will help other educators do this kind of work. Um, that's one challenge. Uh, resources, and I want to go back to assignments also. Um, <laughs> Joao mentioned that um, for him, uh, creating the right assignment is a challenge, and I would uh, concur. I, I agreed completely. Uh, it has been my challenge as well, uh, both as an alternative assessment and both in the model of the whole university course, to make sure that I have assignments that are the right size, the right scope, um, and are understandable to the students and also interesting enough for them to actually want to engage um, and also that it's clear how I assess their progress. So in a way, um, a bit of what happened to me um, using Wikipedia in the classroom is now happening with Wikidata. I was very ambitious at the beginning. Even when I was coming to, a, um, to support someone else's course and I would do two sessions, let's say, um, of uh, an intro and then a workshop about Wikipedia, and I would strive for the students to, um, to write full articles or to expand or do something really meaningful. As I did it more and more throughout the years, I found myself shrinking the size of the assignments and creating like mini assignments or um, today we, we like to talk about mini contributions, right? So finding cool and interesting ways for the students to contribute something but that it's not too much um, is important. And just the way I, I kind of went and shrunk over the years the Wikipedia assignments, I find that uh, it's really important to do the same with Wikidata. So giving the students something on the one hand meaningful and on the other hand um, with clear boundaries that I can, like very clear steps of what they need to do, um, how they can engage, but still making it interesting enough has been a challenge uh, in my courses, and uh, it's still a work in progress. I keep experimenting, and I think that's the most important thing, that we are all experimenting with this platform and trying to look for new ways to incorporate it um, into the academic curriculum because we understand it's important, um, but I would totally agree that it's, it's like you said, you need to create that awareness, and in that sense, um, I want to ask, the panelists, what have worked for you? Like, what helped you do the work that you do? So, Deborah, you first. Um, well, one of the important things that I find that helped uh, me do the work is making sure that we document everything on Viki. That we don't have thousands of little documents flying all over the place, but that we have our discussions on Viki. 
that we have our project page on Viki, that the students hand in their reports on Viki, so that the next group can look back and see what the others did, uh, what helped them, what didn't help them, and that helps the next group start at a, a higher level than the group before. Yeah, that is certainly one approach to like, keep everything in, in one place. I would just suggest from my experience and knowing the work that others are doing that some uh, educators choose to use uh, social media as oh. another means. Oh, no. no. Yeah. Stay on Viki. Um, it, I am actually forbidden from using Facebook in, in uh, instruction at my university, mm -hmm. so um, I would not be able to use it. I heard there must be some yeah. Facebook group or something like this. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's no go. It has to be on Viki, so that's why I, I would plead for everyone else to be keeping their work open and on Viki. Yeah, and that's the beauty of the Wikimedia movement. There's always diversity, and once you hear someone arguing so passionately about no use of only Wiki, uh, you will find other people as passionate saying that the use of social media is the best thing that could have happened because it's helping them engage with students in their own platforms in the way that is easy for them. Wiki is, is notoriously known to uh, not being as friendly uh, or as the user interface is somewhat lacking. Yeah, and but so, in, in, in yeah. Germany, Facebook is only used by old people. Um, well, the, the, it, it doesn't the, have to be Facebook. The are on Instagram. It doesn't have to be Facebook, but you get the idea. Uh, Ewan, what about you? What has worked for you? Um, well, the, the sort of nature of the challenge has changed each year. So initially it was about how could we get the good information out of access database and then model it on Wikidata. So just, it was all about that initial exchange in the first year. So there was no sort of PDF handouts available <laughs> to do that. Right. Um, and then the next year it was about how can we then enrich the data, working with Google Spreadsheets and the Wikidata plugin and things like that. And, but, uh, and then the, the, the final year was working with OpenRefine and sort of like trying to get our heads around that, about linking their data, adding geographical data, then putting it on a website. So again, it was sort of like each year it was different. So it was, it was all, a, but always it was geared in what stories and engaging tales could be told once we had all that data in and we had the visualization. So the students were always motivated when they had that carrot. Mm -hmm. um, they, they weren't always really happy with the sort of um, manual labor aspect to do, especially, especially when you have to get 50 edits on Wikidata to be able to do bulk uploading in the first place. That was a challenge, but the main thing that helped was having the Wikidata community primed that we were going to do this, and the fact that I, I had knowledgeable people around me that I, I sort of said, could you be available, sort of, if we ever have questions, like Navino Evans and Martin Poulter and Jason Evans as well, you know, sort of in Simon Cobb. We just made sure that we had good people around us mm -hmm. who knew the, th the, the things that we needed to know when we needed to know them. But I agree, documentation was super important, but there, there's a number of, like, learning hurdles that mm. we were trying to come up against in a very... Yeah. Tight window. Yeah, and the fact that the tools continue to grow and you have to know everything and you have to, like, there's so much to learn all the time. You have to really keep your, yourself um, focused on, on that. Otherwise, you, you'd be doing maybe manual work that there is now a tool that you don't know about that is doing it in a much easier way. So connecting, again, to the community is important. Do you have final words on what worked for you? Because we kind of have to uh, wrap up very soon. OK, so I guess an important aspect of the way I've also worked on the education program is to connect it to a larger ecology within the community, within the tech development uh, aspect of our community trainings through Wikidata Labs is it's part of something. So we have Wikimedians in residence, we have the actual community engaging, coming for workshops, we set up an agenda for Wikidata Labs that can actually contribute to developing the progress that we want to reach. We develop tools, we do research, so it's enriching to some extent, or it's providing a dense 
experience for the growth of the community. It's a slow process. It's something that needs to be engaged, rethink, rethought, and that's why this kind of uh, conference is so important. We need to be in touch. There is no right way, it's basic experimenting. No one really knows the best way how uh, it should be done because no one has actually done it before, so we are all experimenting. And I was just as something, since I have the mic now, I was thinking about what Akbar, is, Akbar Ali said. The first time that, that I used Wikipedia with high school students, it was a complete failure. I had been very successful Wikipedia assignments with university students. It's just with high school, they just didn't get it at the level that we all thought we should lead because it was just too hard in the process of the critical process. But then I think Wikidata is actually a good resource for high school students. So I think that open, an eye opening in your presentation, I think I should go back to this experience. So I want to conclude uh, the panel um, by saying, first of all, thank you so much to all the panelists, and not only to them, but also to um, the greater, the, the bigger community of um, um, Wikimedians working in education to uh, help evangelize and do this, this work. And I want to conclude um, saying, or reminding rather, to, to us, to, to our community, that you know this is the second Wikidata conference, um, in the first Wikidata conference, we also had an education panel. Um, it was the only education session in, in the conference. And two years have passed, so much have been done, so, much, uh, so many cool experimenting, and, but we still have only one panel in this conference for education. Um, this is not a criticism, but rather for me an eye-opening moment to realize that we are still at the very beginning stages of showing our impact and why this is important to the bigger Wikimedia community. And I look at every, each and every one of you sitting here and listening at home as um, people who can now go and do it yourselves. Um, and experimenting, connecting with the community, talking about the challenges, sharing best practices, sharing resources, is, um, is basically the way to go, so go experiment. Um, Wikidata is amazing. It's such a, uh, a unique tool to teach all sorts of things, right? From data completion to um, showing, to being able to show um, the gender gap and knowledge gaps in, in general in a visualized and cool way. It, it is an educational uh, tool, so use it. And hopefully by the next Wikidata Con, we're going to see a bunch of um, other sessions, and uh, I, I would just to say one, one more thing, and I know Joao has to run to the next session, um, about GLAM. Use GLAM, use libraries, work with the low-hanging fruit, which is the lecturers who are already teaching semantic web and uh, can use this in a, in a way that makes sense. Um, they're your best friends. Um, libraries especially will help you um, Hey, <laughs> hello. Libraries will definitely help you in academic institutions. Usually there are libraries. Work with the libraries to help disseminate the idea to the faculty, to the students. This will probably be the things that will spark the idea for some lecturer to try it. And we will then conquer the world together. So, so I'm a librarian. I actually have a question to the panel, which is... Yes. So I'm a librarian and I wanted to know, well, one, ideas for one-off lessons instead of like semester long or quarter long, because I tend to, I try to do more data literacy with students and also yeah. how to get you into run. faculties or your colleagues' um, brains that this is great. <laughs> Joao, can you give the mic to, to like, how I we will, we will release Joao who has to run, but we will yeah. take just, uh, more, just, five more minutes of, of questions. Uh, just really quick then. So, uh, yeah, so it's like Martin Poulter is running a Sparkle, how to make a Sparkle query workshop fun later this afternoon. And I would start with that. Oh, I, I, yeah. Because it's like, the, like you were saying, it's about sort of understanding the sort of like how they can 
visualize the data that's already there <laughs> initially and work like with simple spark queries build them up and do yeah. much more co that that could be done quite simply in one, so, yeah, one that's workshop how I do, do my workshops i do them like okay somebody has a question i'm like okay who are what are the all of the people who won this award and then we do that query and then we see all the gaps and so then let's fill in all these gaps yeah. and that's how i tend to do these workshops but it's completely over the head. just continue you know uh, be vigilant in continue to doing it continue to do the workshops and at one mm -hmm. point someone will you know will see the light um, and visualization is is probably the best way to to show impact right so you're on the right direction yeah. it sounds just go for it yeah, maybe uh, had anybody know the wikipedia adventure then uh, if you can make a Wikidata adventure, then that would be uh, super cool to introduce. Well, we have Wikidata, Wikidata games, so we yeah, can use yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're, we're we have to we have Wikidata to conclude. Um, you're all welcome to talk to us later on. Thank you.